All right, another more or less random video. I don't really have a name for that type of video. I usually do those if I can't really get a hold on a specific idea that is floating through my mind. Anyways, the topic of this video is are MMORPGs losing their casual player base? And I try to talk about MMOs in general, but in this specific video I will heavily focus on Guild Wars 2 since that game unfortunately is the peak example of MMO development failure. I mean, you can literally times 10 everything in Guild Wars 2. Casuals are more casual than it is good for them. Competitive players try harder than necessary, especially witnessing that in PvP is actually kinda sad and yeah, delete ranked arena net. Release the last remains of the PvP community from their suffering. Don't force them to queue in the middle of the night. For nothing. Oh yeah, and decisions made by ArenaNet for their game are catering towards so many layers of stupidity unmatched in the gaming sphere. So first of all, to understand my point of view, I am a very heavily invested casual. I play multiple MMOs and therefore I can't really deep dive into one single game. Um, what I do very often these days is just wandering around, doing some random quest chains while watching YouTube or reading random posts on the forums. And for some reason I found myself playing a lot of older MMOs. However, if I had to choose one game for the rest of my life, it would be most likely Diablo 2. Okay, going back to MMOs. So while I was wandering through Guild Wars 2 and yeah, Reconsidering my life choices, because that's what Guild Wars 2 does to you, I stumbled across someone obviously struggling with an open world quest. And in that specific world quest you basically have to dash through an orb and break its shield and quickly after shoot a fireball at the orb. And yep, in good old MMO fashion you have to do that 10 plus times to make sure you don't have fun while doing it. So while that person was struggling doing that specific world quest and the good, humble and kind person I am. I just kept watching her suffer, while simultaneously gaslighting people on reddit. You know, basically doing my deeds as the average MMORPG player. Until she asked me for help and I shit you not, it would take me around 2 minutes to finish that world quest. But helping her took me literally 2 hours. Anyways, so after that I was talking a little bit to her and apparently she has some sort of blindness where she can only see segments of the screen, not sure what exactly it is, but she told me I would have to split my screen into multiple parts and tap through them. And apparently that is what it feels like to have her um, condition or kind of blindness. And that whole situation left me thinking a lot for a very long time. I mean, a person like that will most likely be never able to play content past the max level in any game. There's no shot. And following that I started googling for a while and there is an insane number of tools to assist handicapped people from special monitors or software up to fully customizable controllers. Which means I was actually wrong. In this day and age gaming is actually more accessible than ever. Unless we talk about pay to win games, in those games you have to be an oil baron to see some light, I think. And yeah, of course that example with a handicapped person is definitely on the extreme or niche side of things, but that whole situation led to something completely different, but still slightly related. Because the more important question is who even provides feedback regarding gameplay or the game in general. Because every time I look at balance changes, doesn't matter what game it is, I see stuff like the coefficient multiplier was changed from 1.258 to 1.269 or the stun duration was decreased by 0.2 seconds or the AOE radius was increased by 12% and yeah, there are obviously some reasons for those changes but it still left me thinking. For who the heck is that made for? Well, to answer that question we have to go back to the root of a problem as old as MMORPGs themselves. The war between casuals blaming hardcore players for gatekeeping and 
hardcore players being bronze in League or Starcraft trying to be competitive in a fantasy roleplay game. It always was and it always will be. However, the balance of power has shifted and not in favor for the casuals. Okay, we will now move to YouTube and maybe Twitch and even though it only represents the fraction of a fraction of the player base and if you watch Twitch or consume YouTube content, you are already heavily invested into gaming. However, I still think for MMORPG players it is more common to engage with the game outside the game. Anyways, the way people talk about games has changed and over time the difference between casuals and hardcore players who provide content on YouTube has changed drastically. Casual content has to be almost always exclusively positive with a slight touch of it is what it is or yeah well I don't care, everything is fine, play how you want, make sure to check out my roleplay builds for instance content. Basically just people reading quest text during their first playthrough or something and constructive feedback from the casual player base has almost completely vanished. Same as Guild Wars 2 does if you don't play it for two weeks but that's a topic for a different video. Now actually as a quick side tension I haven't touched Guild Wars 2 in a few weeks and holy moly, it completely vanished. Nothing, no ads, nothing. Okay, back to the casuals. Um, apart from being completely silent, sometimes if content in game is way too hard, you find a little bit of uproar. That normally happens when the issue is slightly overlapping into the hardcore player base. Talking about the hardcore player base, these players are very heavily invested. They are part of multiple discords, conversations in forums, reading developer posts almost instantly, TLDR. They are a very very vocal minority. But even though it is the smallest part of a gaming community, on the same hand, they are the only part of the community with a deep understanding of the game and its mechanics. That part of the player base is the only group of people who can provide feedback a developer can work with. That's a fact. I mean, if people complain that the boss is too hard, what do you want to do as a developer? I mean, here. Super easy looking for raid mode, I guess. And going back to hardcore end gamers, they have another very interesting character trait. They are relentless. Which leads me to another good example happened in Guild Wars 2 with an open world boss called Su Wong. And besides the boss being bugged as hell, she was also extremely difficult compared to any other open world boss ever released in Guild Wars 2. Maybe triple trouble, but that fight is only difficult for another specific reason. So in order to make Su Wong more accessible, ArenaNet nerfed it again and again and fixed some bugs along the line. I guess the bug fixes were just a happy accident because normally bugs in Guild Wars 2 are called gameplay features, but yeah, that's another story. And to this day, people complain that the boss got nerfed and therefore became boring. Two years after, and let me stress that a little bit more, people complain that it has become easier to get loot in a game that is based on gold per hour. Guild Wars 2 is the only game I know of that has turned into a spreadsheet. Every part of the game across the whole spectrum of players. Long story short, Su Wong is now a tip over. Basically, story done? Nope. People are still complaining. Because there is something else very strange with hardcore endgamers and this is important to understand. If you, as a casual, don't put in the effort, learning the game, preparing as good as a veteran player, you are not allowed to play. You do not deserve the loot. If you not play the best performing build, if you don't know the fight, before the fight, you can't play. Sorry. And now some might say that is not true. You can play whatever DPS, healer or tank you want. And here comes the point where I unfortunately have to say, nope, that's not true. You straight up can't. Because MMORPGs are balanced around the best performing players and their strategies. For example, if people make 100 gold per hour. 
it will get nerfed, even though a casual barely made 2 gold an hour using the exact same method. If people do 60k DPS with a build, it will get nerfed, even though 75% of the player base barely hits 20k with the exact same build. And fights will be designed and adjusted around strategies and performances of the best teams. Don't bring the player, bring the class. If you don't have a Mesmer portal, Warlock portal or whatever weird gimmicky skills are out there, the fight will be impossible. No teleport, no kill. It isn't anymore about don't stay in the fire. You have to dodge roll out into a portal to drop the debuff outside the map just to teleport back while you press your rotation without meaning because nowadays everything just happens. You still have a strict order of skills to press but everything just happens. That is the case in almost every modern MMO, in World of Warcraft especially. The only skill that kinda feels good to press is execute. That's it. And Guild Wars 2 has basically nothing left in that regard. You have utility skills, but outside of PvP and World vs. World, it is part of a brain AFK rotation. And yeah, PvP is dead anyways, and ArenaNet is working very hard to kill World vs. World now too. So yeah, not much left of that once unique and heavily on movement focused combat system. Furthermore, in Guild Wars 2 we have basically reached a knowledge gap where the average DPS can differ from 2k up to 60k, thanks to nearly infinite small changes. Now, one class can only work in one specific way. But that isn't the end of the line, because ArenaNet, the development team behind Guild Wars 2, has implemented a third difficulty, because yeah, their challenge mode apparently is just a gamble, if it works or not. So better we add in completely out of touch difficulty mode, in hope nobody notices if it's broken. Furthermore, next expansion will have a new raid, after years, and the foundation of all raids still untouched. World vs. World is now fully based on the blob meta, where you kinda have to join a big group. No additional gameplay features to promote small havoc squads, like, I don't know, for example airdrops. People force open new maps to avoid casuals and yeah, Secrets of the Obscure has shown ArenaNet doesn't care for the open world anymore. It is basically just a skeleton to be salvaged for instance content. ArenaNet's new release cycle is not meant to provide more content more frequently. It is an attempt to stretch basically nothing into something. And to kind of wrap it up, I think the next expansion will be the downfall of Guild Wars 2, because here's the thing. It will sound a little bit unrelated, but that's what I can't solve at the moment. So basically ArenaNet has no platform to advertise their game. ArenaNet is fully dependent on people reading blog posts to promote their announcement on YouTube. And yeah, you have some people reading it for the sole purpose to monetize it, but let's be real here. Their feedback is worthless. It doesn't help the hardcore player base nor the casual player base. And hardcore players are the minority, but they are 100 times louder than the casual player base. And therefore, ArenaNet has to cater towards them which means the new raid has to be difficult. And ArenaNet, and I genuinely believe that, and I don't mean it in a mean way, even though it sounds like that. The current dev team is not the development team that made Guild Wars 2 great. It just isn't. And in addition to that, ArenaNet cannot design hard bosses. If a boss is hard, it will mostly be based on an accident, like Su Wong was, same as the new legendary difficulty mode was. The way both events turned out was 100% not planned. TLDR, the new raid will fail for hardcore players because ArenaNet cannot design fights. Same as it will fail for casuals, because there is no progression culture in Guild Wars 2. And to be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if we have a lot of people who play Guild Wars 2 for years and don't even know raids exist. Content is meant to appeal to the hardcore player base. The casual content is just a stripped down version of that, and that counts for almost every modern MMORPG. Guild Wars 2 is meant for hardcore, heavily invested endgame players. Problem is, current ArenaNet can't cater 
towards those players because they can't design fights. But unfortunately they have to because that is the loudest part of the community and the part of the community that actually reaches people outside the game. So maybe ArenaNet's failure is based on the way they try to recycle content because it is so intense. I mean one boss has to work in multiple game modes and settings. For example, Epic has to work in fractals, in the open world, in a story mission and hell, maybe in the future the end boss has to work in a strike mission with three difficulty settings or in an raid with also three difficulty settings. So to kinda sum it up, I think in ArenaNet's attempt and yeah well basically every MMORPG development team's attempt to cater towards the hardcore player base, the casual player base will feel alienated more and more. I mean, go and try PvP, world vs world or instance content. The gap is insane and becomes even bigger going forward. And listen ArenaNet. That is very important. If your blog post reading squad is gone, most likely will not happen because it is a way to monetize stuff. But if it happens, you have no foundation to advertise your own game. Nothing. So bring back Guild Chat Arena Net. You have to prepare for the inevitable. And yeah, with that said, I really hope someone can make something out of it because I'm kinda running in circles with that idea by now. So yeah, again, with that said, thanks for watching. Like always, share your opinion, be yourself, unless you can be Batman. And until then, I guess, yeah, until then. <laughs>